We're going to look at how to thicken the paint to give a relief or a textured impasto finish to your work. Matisse Medium 38 is the acrylic thickener. This is a chemical thickener that will chemically thicken the paint. And I'll show you what I mean. So we'll take the flow, which is generally a fairly thin paint. It'll dry if you brush it out without, without too many brush strokes. It's quite thin. There you'll see it dripping off the, the palette knife. Now, at about 5%, I'm just doing that by eye, Initially, the paint will look quite dry and it'll sort of go potentially a little bit cottage cheesy to begin with, but you can see now it's, it's just, it starts to thicken up instantly. You're just going to make sure you mix that in really well and, and get that sort of yeah, cottage cheese look out of it, and that'll, that'll come out to a nice buttery finish. But you can see it's gone quite thick. Adding the thickener to the paint is fine to make the paint a bit thicker, thicker, give it a bit more body if you've got a thin paint. If you're looking to get a really thick, heavy textured finish, rather than just thickening the paint up, you would be better off to use impasto medium. So the impasto dries differently to the paint. The impasto will dry with an open matrix, which means that you can put it on more thickly and it will dry at about the same rate as a thinner coat of paint. It's because of that open matrix. While you can thicken the paint using the acrylic thickener, you won't get the same body that you will get with one of these other mediums. And of course, you can lay the impasto or any of these other mediums down first and paint over the top, which means you're not using as much paint. So it's more economical to use something like impasto medium. Secondly, the impasto medium will dry with an open matrix, which means it will dry more quickly. So here we've built it up much, much higher. It won't dry as quickly as the paint, but it also doesn't run the risk of cracking. If you had the paint this thick and just had the paint by itself and had it as thick as we have the impasto medium, there's the potential, because it has a slightly different matrix the way it links together, there's the potential that it might crack, especially if you put another layer straight over the top before it's completely finished drying. So now I'm going to add a little bit of paint. So the impasto medium, you can add paint to the impasto medium or you can paint over the top but obviously that starts to thicken the paint as well and we can get a real build out of that and it doesn't change the colour too much. I've, only, I've probably got 50-50 paint to impasto there and you'll notice it really isn't changing uh, the colour too much but we're getting some incredible build out of it. Now to go one step further, the light modelling paste. If you really want to get some texture the light modelling paste is substantially heavier, has a lot more texture to it. Once again, like the impasto, will dry with no risk of cracking. And of course we can add colour to that, although you will find a little bit more colour shift when adding this medium to the paint. But of course you can paint over the top of both of these with the colour. The difference when they dry, and you probably won't notice this so much on camera, but the difference is the light modelling paste, at least, um, dries to a rougher finish, um, a, more, uh, uh, a, a more textured finish versus the impasto that can, depending on how you lay it down, dry really smoothly with a, quite a smooth surface. Now we'll talk about the gel mediums. The impasto mediums, and you'll see this when they dry, dry very opaque, the impasto and the light modelling paste. But the gel medium, an original medium we've been making for over 50 years, but the difference is artists tend to use the gel mediums for is for glazing, for three-dimensional glazes. So you won't add as much colour as you might do with the other 
mediums we've just used, you'll still get texture out of them, but not quite as much texture as you might get from the impasto or the light modeling. So that's the matte gel medium and will probably dry with a similar sort of sheen uh, as the light modeling paste. In other words, quite a low sheen, hence, hence the matte. A gel medium though, straight gel medium, will dry with quite a high sheen, in fact a very high sheen. When, when you add some colour to it, even once dry, it can actually look uh, like the paint is still wet because of the sheen that it has. And we'll, we'll let this dry and you'll see this, you'll see what I mean. The gel medium gloss will dry completely clear, whereas the matte gel medium will dry with a bit of a haze to it. The gel medium MM4, which will dry with extremely high gloss. And then, of course, there's my favourite, the super heavy gel medium, which is basically just the gel medium on steroids. It's kind of like the light modelling paste really thick and chunky. It will dry completely clear and to a high gloss. And once again, you'd use this like the gel medium, the MM4, to do glazes, three-dimensional glazes. But that whiteness there will, will go clear and, and dry to a high gloss. So after talking about all of these different mediums that we can use to thicken the paint, each one is slightly different. Overall, they all do a similar thing. They'll give you texture, but there'll be a different feel to that texture, a different sheen level, and you'll use them for different things, like the glazing with the gel mediums versus the pure building with the impasto medium or the light modeling paste, or with the acrylic thickener, just wanting to give a little bit more body to your paint without going the, the, the whole hog of, of thickening the paint right up. So there you have it. Six different mediums that will all build and give texture to your work, but in slightly different ways. So, welcome back. We've been letting these guys dry for a week, and I just want you to notice the difference here where we use the acrylic thickener. It certainly thick the paint, thickened the paint up, as you remember, but still nothing like the rest of these mediums. And you'll see the reason we laid them out this way because we've gone from basically the mattest pretty well. I've got to say, I think the, uh, the light modeling paste is probably matter certainly than the impasto. The impasto is really, ow, quite hard. Uh, the, the light modeling paste though, quite matte in comparison to the impasto. And then we've got the matte gel medium, which of course is, is very matte does not dry completely clear versus the gel medium that you can see, even though it's very thick here, it's quite clear for half of it, but there's still where it should be and will be in time clear. It's still a bit milky and that's just water trapped in there because this is five or six millimetres thick. And then our super heavy gel medium, which has this extreme gloss, um, but we've put it on there two centimetres or more thick. And so it's still, it's still quite cloudy, but I would expect that even after only a week. We're in Sydney, it's been fairly humid and raining, so it's going to take just that little bit longer to dry out. But there you have the finished product, as it were. So obviously the drying times vary considerably, as does the humidity and temperature have an effect on the drying times, but definitely the finishes are all quite different.